Heavenly Father, we thank you once again uh, for the privilege we have to study your word. Father, at this moment as we speak, there are those that are not feeling well among us. We pray, Father, for healing. We pray that you would answer prayer. Even at this time, there are some who uh, have uh, sent us re prayer requests via uh, mail and email and uh, phone calls. You know who they are. Some are seeking for a country property because they understand the signs of the times and they want to get out of the city. And so they're asking for guidance and we pray that uh, you would answer. You would open doors that only you can open. Make a path for your people, Father, to uh, follow you at this time. And there are others that have requested prayer because of uh, sickness. Again, uh, you know those names, those individuals, and the problem that they are facing at this time physically. But I pray, Father, for healing at this time according to your will. We invite your presence in our midst as we open your word at this time. We pray that uh, you would help us to see things that uh, perhaps we could not have seen before. Open our eyes, open our understanding. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, let's turn to uh, the book of Deuteronomy. Which book are we going to? Deuteronomy. We're going to the book of uh, Deuteronomy. If you have a Bible, I would encourage you to uh, open it. If you don't have one, I encourage you to, to pick up one Bible. We have uh, plenty available here. So we're going to the book of uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8. Our topic this evening uh, is on uh, fasting. This is the other item, the other ingredient that I was referring to, that uh, in order to have a genuine revival and reformation, uh, it must accompany by, uh, what's the word? Fasting. As a matter of fact, the story of the children of Israel reminds us of that. Remember, God uh, had taken them out of Egypt, and God was about to take them uh, to the promised land. Where was God taking them? To the, land. to the promised land. And what was one of the things that God did? He took them to the wilderness. What was in the wilderness? Trials, temptations, what else? Lack of food. There was no food in the wilderness. As a matter of fact, uh, we read uh, in Numbers uh, and other passages in the Psalms, we, the Bible tells us that uh, God was the one providing not just food now, but also water. There was no water as well in the wilderness. So trials, temptations came uh, their way. And uh, they were cut off from earth, every earthly support. And uh, God wanted to be the one sustaining them. And God, uh, as Moses is about to tell us here in Deuteronomy chapter 8, are you there? And the Bible says, uh, beginning in verse 1, are you there? And the Word of God says, All the commandments which I command thee this day shall ye observe uh, to do, that ye may live and multiply and go in uh, and possess uh, the land uh, which the Lord swear unto your fathers. And thou shalt uh, remember all the way which the Lord uh, thy God uh, led thee these uh, forty years. Notice what God says here, ye shall uh, remember all the ways that the Lord, that God, uh, led thee these 40 years. Where? Where were they? In the wilderness. What's, what was the destination? The promised land, Canaan. And as we started to look at uh, this uh, spiritual warfare, and uh, what were the uh, three things that we looked at uh, that we are really wrestling against? Self, sin, and Satan. Now, what was their struggle here in the wilderness? Self. Now, the number one reason why God brought them to the wilderness was not to face uh, Satan, was not to conquer Satan. God brought them into the wilderness to conquer self. God brought them in the wilderness to get victory over sin, over self, and over sin. Those were the main the main. Items there, they, or the main uh, warfare there, they, they needed to fight. It was self and uh, sin. But Satan will come afterwards. Satan came in the form 
of the Amorites and the Hittites and the Jebusites and all of these other nations that stood in their ways. Like Jericho, for example. So these nations represented uh, Satan, uh, which, which is uh, number three on our list. Self, sin, and uh, Satan. But notice with me now what God did here to help them to fight uh, self and to overcome self. And uh, ultimately, if they could overcome self, they, could, they would be able to overcome uh, sin. And uh, what was uh, that particular thing that God did here? Notice now. Let's read verse 2 again. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these forty years in the wilderness to, to do what? To humble thee. So again, let's pause there. Do the math together. In other words, God brought them to the wilderness to do what? To humble them. Then uh, what was the problem? What was the problem then? If God brought them to the wilderness to humble them, what was the problem? Pride. Pride. Okay, I hear that. What else? Sin, uh, self, rather. Self was the problem because when you are being humble, what is being demoted? Self is being demoted. If, if uh, you are being humbled like Jesus, self is being demoted. So the problem was with self. So again, it's self, sin, and Satan. So the number one reason why God brought them to the wilderness is because uh, self was pretty much alive. Now let's look at the, uh, let's keep reading. It says, and, uh, are you there? Verse 2, and to prove thee. The word prove there means to test, to test you, and to prove thee. And then it says, to know what was, uh, to know what was in uh, thine uh, heart. So God brought them in the wilderness so far, three things, for three reasons. What, what were they again? Come on, talk with me. The number one reason was to humble them. What was the second thing? To prove them. That means to test them. So the first test was what again? Was over their selfishness. Selfishness, it's, uh, it's us. That's our biggest problem. That's our biggest enemy. It's self. Not, and then it says, what was the third one? To know what was in uh, thine uh, heart? The Bible tells us uh, in Isaiah chapter 1, uh, it, God, tells, uh, God invites us to uh, reason together. It says, come now, let us what? Let us reason uh, together, though your sins may be as what? As scarlet, they shall be as white as uh, snow. So the invitation or God bringing them to the wilderness and the Bible says to humble them. It's an invitation uh, to, a, to recognize, to see their sinful condition. Because the third point there says to know what was uh, in thine heart. Perhaps they didn't know. So God invite them uh, to see their wretchedness. So Moses says the reason why God brought you to the wilderness uh, is to humble you, to prove thee, and then to know what was in your heart. Now, all of us living in these last days. Remember the destination was uh, the promised land, right? The destination was uh, the promised land. And our destination is where? Is the promised land as well. Paul says in 1st Thessalonians, 1st Corinthians rather, let me correct that. 1st Corinthians chapter 10. All these things were written for our admonition. And when Paul says this, they were written for our benefits. When he said that, he was... Uh, saying or going back to the history of the children of Israel as Moses is repeating Deuteronomy, meaning the repetition of the second law. It's the repetition there. That's what the word Deuteronomy there means. Likewise, Paul was trying to remind us of the mistakes of the children of Israel as we are journeying to the promised land as well. God brought them to the wilderness to humble them, to prove them, to test them, that they might know. So we want God to test us. Mm -hmm. We want God to prove us. Yes. The, why? Remember Isaiah 1 again, we just quoted. It says, come now, let us reason together, though your sins may be as scarlet. But what, is, uh, God, uh, tr wh what does God want, want to do for you and I? He wants to make them as white as snow. That means he wants, he wants to cleanse us, right? He wants to cleanse us because He wants us to eventually 
make it to the kingdom. Because we cannot make it to the kingdom uh, if our sins are st still looking like scarlet. And uh, by the way, scarlet there, what does scarlet represent in the Bible? Who wears scarlet? Which, uh, which institution? Uh, the Bible says uh, the papacy. So God does not want us to reflect uh, that, the character of the papacy. He wants us to reflect uh, the character of Jesus. Amen. Though your sins may be like the papacy, but uh, the invitation is, I will make them as white as my son. Amen. As my son. So again, those three points there we just looked at in verse 2, that God brought them to the wilderness. They were there for 40 days. God uh, wanted to humble them, to prove them, and to know what was in their, thine heart, whether thou wouldest keep his uh, commandments or no. Notice now verse 3 with me. Then the Bible says, and he do what? He did what? He humbled thee and suffered thee to do what? Hunger. hunger. What's another word here for hunger? God caused them to do what? To fast in the wilderness. God suffered them to fast in the wilderness. So fasting has a, a great benefit. Not just physical benefit, but spiritual benefit. Because remember, as we mentioned a moment ago, that uh, God cut them off from uh, every earthly support and brought them to the wilderness. And there was nothing in the wilderness. And there was no water, no food, nothing. And God suffered them, as Moses says here. God suffered thee to hunger and uh, fed thee with uh, manna, which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might, notice with me the, carefully now, notice carefully, notice the benefit of uh, fasting here. Notice the benefit of uh, God taking them to the wilderness and suffer them uh, to go hungry. Notice now. In other words, I'll just translate it for you before I read it. God wanted uh, to help them uh, to be able to discern spiritual things. Let's read it. It says, Again, uh, it says, uh, Neither did thy fathers know that ye might make thee know that manna doth not, what is it? Live by bread alone, but by every, what, what is it? Word that proceedeth uh, out of the mouth uh, of uh, the Lord uh, doth manna live. So the word that proceed out of mouth of God, the Bible says uh, that uh, God is spirit. Amen. And uh, the word of God uh, is spirit. Spiritual. So God suffered them uh, to fast in the wilderness so that they might understand spiritual things. The bread there also referred to the spiritual food. Because Jesus quoted that in Matthew chapter 4. When uh, the, the tempter, as a matter of fact, let's turn to Matthew chapter 4. Notice with me now in uh, Matthew chapter 4. So the reason why God suffered them, uh, allowed them to go hungry and uh, took them to the wilderness is because God wanted them to be able to have a clear mind and to understand spiritual things. Notice now, Matthew chapter 4, we're looking at the temptation there in the wilderness. And uh, the Bible says uh, in uh, verse uh, 1, are you there? Amen. Then uh, was uh, Jesus led up uh, of the Spirit into the wilderness to be, what was the reason? To be tempted. Did, did we see that word there? In uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8. Yes. It says God uh, brought them to the wilderness to tempt them. That means to test them. So you see Jesus was uh, repeating here the history of the children of Israel in the wilderness. So he went to the wilderness to be tempted. To be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days. He's the number 40 again. Just like the children of Israel, as Moses says, they were in the wilderness 40 years. And throughout those 40 years, God was tempted them. And now the 40 years there, or the 40 days, the number 40 period, represent a testing time. It represents a generation. They had to be tested before they could enter the promised land. They had to be tested before God could admit them into the heavenly kingdom. Just like uh, we have to be tested in these last days. And uh, the Bible goes on to say, He was afterward uh, and uh, hungered. Uh, he was what? Hungered. hungered. We also saw that the children of Israel were in the wilderness hungry. 
and God was the one who led them to the wilderness, just like Jesus also had to follow that path to gain victory over appetite, to gain victory over what's the number one item again? Self. There's self, sin, and, uh, and Satan. Self, sin, and Satan. So notice with me now. If uh, I pass this test, as uh, God uh, led the children of Israel in the wilderness to tempt them, that was to test them. In the same fashion, God uh, tempted uh, or allowed Eve uh, to be tempted uh, over what? Appetite. Appetite, food. That's uh, the first test there, and that's the, the, the self. To see to self will yield to something uh, that God had forbidden. Or to food. Amen? Amen? Now, if I can gain victory over self, gaining the victory over sin, it will be nothing. Yeah. Getting the victory over Satan will be nothing. First, we must conquer self. This is the reason why the first battle Jesus had to fight here was over self. Because remember, the temptation, the way the Satan came to him, the appeal was for him to please self. Yes. Just like a Satan appealed to Eve to please herself. She said, he said that to Eve that your eyes will be open. Your eyes. Mm -hmm. Just that self. See, your eyes will be open at the moment you eat from that tree. Your eyes will be open and ye shall be what? Like so notice, ye shall be like God. So that's self. And then the Bible says, when the woman saw, see, oh, that self there, that it was pleasing to the eyes, uh, and a food, uh, that, a food that could make one wise. Well, the Bible says, God says, no, it would lead to damnation. But notice now, again, as we are studying this spiritual warfare, our number one enemy is self. If we look at the order, the way Jesus did it here, and the way Moses uh, spoke about, here, uh, about it in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8, if we can gain victory over self, we can gain victory over sin, we can gain victory over Satan. These uh, two arch enemies there, sin and uh, Satan, uh, will be no match for you and I. Just like Jesus had to gain victory over self, and Satan was no match for him. Let's keep reading the Word of God. Verse 3, And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be, notice now, appealing to what? Appealing to self. Yes. If thou be the Son of God. Was he the Son of God? Yes, yes he was the Son of God. But the, what, what was the reason why the devil was asking the question that way? Was it because the devil didn't know? No, no he was in heaven, remember? Yes. The devil was in heaven, but uh, he was appealing to his uh, fleshly loss. If thou be the Son of God, command that these stones be made, uh, what is it? Bread. But he answered and said, it is written, men shall not live uh, by what? By bread alone, uh, but by every word uh, that proceedeth uh, out of the mouth uh, of God. So it was the same thing that, back to Deuteronomy chapter 8 again. It was the same thing that Moses says here of the children of Israel. So remember, Jesus was uh, the second Moses there. And Jesus was retracing uh, the path of the children of Israel. And Jesus, the Bible says, is our example. So notice now, they were on their way to the promised land. And uh, verse 3 again says, And uh, he humbled thee and suffered thee to hunger and fed thee with manna which thou knewest not. Neither did thy fathers know that he might make thee know that man doth not live by bread alone, but by what? But by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of the Lord doth man live. So if we can gain a victory over, over this, we can get victory over sin, over self. Now we're talking about fasting here. As a result of fasting, it is not only proven uh, scientifically, but the Bible just told us here, there are benefits. There are what? Benefits. benefits to fasting. And the number one benefit here, we just looked at it, spiritual gift. We will be able to discern uh, spiritual things better because men shall not live by the physical food uh, alone, but by the spiritual food uh, as well. 
and uh, that comes out through fasting. Now, it is said that, that uh, fasting, scientifically now I'm speaking, it, uh, it, it helps to uh, live longer, and it helps with uh, blood uh, pressure. Uh, if you have a, a high blood sugar level, and if you fast, you, you'll see the benefits of this. It is also good for your skin. Did you know that? As a matter of fact, I have uh, all this for you uh, in uh, the printout here that uh, you will have uh, in a few moments. Uh, it, it is also good uh, for, your, for your skin, and uh, it makes you also resistant to uh, disease. Did you know that? Fasting does that as well. And it also keeps you younger. That's another benefit to fasting. It, it makes you look younger and uh, you live longer as well. Because uh, when you fast, it, it really a time when the body is taking a break. It's like your vehicle, right? It's like your vehicle. If you're constantly running it and uh, without taking a break, then sooner or later, something is going to happen to it. But fasting is giving uh, your, your, your digestive system, it's, it's giving uh, your blood cell, everything, uh, time uh, to recuperate and uh, to cleanse the system. Uh, and that's the reason why Jesus did it. That's the reason why Moses did it. That's the reason why the Bible commands us to also do it as well. Let's go to the book of Mark, M Matthew rather. Let's go to the book of Matthew. Which book are we going to? Matthew chapter 6 we're going to. Matthew chapter 6. So there are great benefits, not only spiritual benefits, but also physical benefits when we take the time to fast. In Matthew chapter 6, this is where we, we are. But uh, there is a, a kind of fast that is acceptable to God as well. Amen? Amen. Notice now. The Bible says in uh, the book of Matthew chapter 6, verse 16. Are you there? Amen. The Bible says, uh, moreover... When ye fast, be not what? As the hypocrites of a, a sad countenance. That means your appearance there. For they disfigure their faces, that they may appear unto men uh, to fast. Verily I say unto you, they have uh, their reward. So when we fast, we should not be like the hypocrites. What do the hypocrites do, according to Jesus? They have an outward appearance. What does that mean to have an outward appearance when you're fasting? They, they look pale, they look like, uh, oh, they're about to die, right? Uh, amen? They were the praise of men, that's right. They, they want others to see, well, I am fasting, right? Yes. But uh, notice now, Jesus says, But thou, when thou fastest, do what? Anoint thine head, and wash thy face, that thou appear not unto men to fast, but unto thy father, which is where? In secret, and thy, notice now, thy father, which seeth in secret, what would the, thy father do? What would our heavenly father do? Shall we reward thee openly? So what's the benefit here of fasting? What's the benefit here? To glorify God. And God who sees this, God who sees the sacrifice you're making, because fasting is, uh, is symbolic uh, to removal of uh, the bad stuff that's in the system. And these bad stuff there represent sins that we want to get rid of. Remember, it's self. Self, sin, and Satan. We want to get rid of all of these things from our lives. We want to stand fast on this battlefield. And uh, one of the items here that we need, one of the weapons here that we need is fasting. Fasting to stand on this battlefield. Now, the world, the wisdom of the world will tell you otherwise. That you need plenty of food to have plenty of energy. But how did uh, Jesus meet the foe in the wilderness? How did Jesus meet the foe in the wilderness? Fasting. Fasting. The Bible tells us that uh, he went there to be tempted. But how did he go there? With an empty stomach. And he remained in that wilderness with that empty stomach for 40 days or 40 years. Now, speaking of the wilderness, you and I will have our wilderness experience. Amen? We, will, we must have a wilderness experience uh, before we enter Canaan. We've been told uh, that uh, the issue of uh, buying uh, and what else? And selling uh, would be what? 
a serious one. It will be a serious one. So that tells me as well, if you do the math carefully, there will be time, a lot of time for fasting. Amen? There will be time for what? Fasting. For fasting. And also, the Bible tells us we will have the experience of the Israelites. What experience I'm talking about? We just looked at it in uh, chapter 8 of Deuteronomy. Whereas, uh, we will have to depend on God uh, for our physical food. But notice now, it comes with what? What was the word? It comes with uh, being uh, tested. God will test us first. That means uh, God will allow us to go hungry. Yes. God uh, will cause us to fast in the wilderness. So therefore, if I cannot gain the victory over this, over hunger, over appetite now, it will be tough for me. I'm going to be like or will be like the children of Israel. I would rather go back to Egypt. Amen. I would rather go back to Egypt. So because uh, the path that Jesus followed in the wilderness is the path his disciples must follow because uh, that was the path the children of Israel followed before they enter Canaan. Amen. Before they enter Canaan. But God wants us uh, to have a clear mind in these last days. To have clear discernment of uh, what's transpiring uh, about us. So Jesus says, he gives us the principle of fasting. Don't fast like the hypocrites do. But do it because of what? Because you want to please uh, your heavenly father. And a uh, pleasing God uh, that's depending upon God. And uh, that's what God uh, wanted the, the children of Israel to do. To depend on him. To wait for him uh, as uh, they were running out of food. As they were running out of water. But notice what Spirit of Prophecy tells us here on the screen. She says, Jesus had shown in uh, what, uh, righteous, uh, what righteousness consists. Now he turned uh, to, what's the word there? Practical duties in, uh, in uh, alms giving, uh, in prayer, in uh, what else? In fasting. He said, let nothing be done to attract attention or win uh, praise uh, to self. In fasting, in, wait, wait, let's pause, let's pause back here. Let's read that one more time. He says what? He said, let nothing be done uh, to attract attention or win uh, praise to what? Self. To self. So what's the, what's the three items there again? Self, self sin, sin, and Satan. So fasting should be done uh, in a way that will not bring attention to self. Because ultimately, it's self that we want to crucify. Because Jesus, Moses rather, Moses says that God brought you to the wilderness. He allowed you to suffer hunger that he might humble thee. And uh, to humble oneself is to lower self. It's to uh, crucify the flesh. Back to the screen. He says, in fasting, go not with the head bowed down and heart filled with uh, thoughts of, uh, of what else? What is it again? Of self. Because self is the biggest enemy there. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Notice with me now. Let's uh, go to the book of uh, Luke with me. Which book? Luke, Luke chapter 9. Notice with me what uh, the Word of God says here in the book of Luke uh, chapter 9. We are dealing with fasting. Uh, and uh, for those of you who are watching online, today was uh, our fasting day. And uh, so the, God is teaching us here. That uh, the experience of the children of Israel and Jesus in the wilderness, we will have the same experience. And what we need in these last days uh, is uh, to consecrate ourselves. That's the word there. Fasting uh, is a way of consecrating ourselves uh, to allow God uh, to do both to will and, uh, and to do of His good pleasure in our lives. Uh, we are in Luke chapter 9. Uh, are you there? Amen. And the Bible says, Then uh, He called uh, His twelve disciples. To, I mean verse 1. Luke chapter 9, verse 1. Then he called uh, his 12 uh, disciples to do what? To get to, together and gave them power and authority over all devils. Uh, over, over power over what? Over all devils. And then uh, it says, and to cure diseases. And he sent them to preach the kingdom of God. Uh, and to do what? To heal uh, the sick. And he said unto them, take nothing for your journey, neither starves, no script, neither bread, 
neither money, neither have uh, two coats uh, a piece. So what's one of the items there that Jesus says, do not take with you? Bread. bread. And bread uh, represents what? If I don't take bread, that's food. If I don't take food with me, what does that mean? Fasting. So that means I'm going to rely on God to provide that uh, basic necessity. So God commanded them here, do not take food with you. Because God is sending them out on this mission. God did not want them to rely on themselves. He wanted to, them to rely on Him. But notice now, the Bible say, also says that uh, Jesus says to cast out, what is it? Devils. Now keep in mind, Jesus says, do not take food with you. Keep that in mind. Uh, we also read this in the uh, same experience there in Matthew chapter 17 and also in Luke chapter 9. Matthew 17 uh, verse 21, same account there. And then Mark 9 or uh, 29, same account there. But notice now, the Bible says, don't take bread. Jesus is sending them on a mission. But don't take food with you. Don't worry about it. I'm sending you forward. Just like the children of Israel were supposed to go forward. But they were in the wilderness where there was no food. God was teaching them to depend on Him for all their needs. And when we depend on God for all our needs, for all my needs, that means I am crucifying the flesh. Self. That means I'm crucifying self. I don't want to rely on myself. Where's, where's the food? Well, God will supply all my needs. Amen. God will supply it, but notice now. Again, Jesus says to cast out devils, but don't take food with you. But notice what spirit of, of well, before we go to spirit of prophecy, let's, let's go with me to the book of uh, Matthew. Matthew chapter 9. Which book? Matthew, Matthew chapter 9. In Matthew chapter 9, uh, keep that in mind that Jesus says, do not take any bread, uh, but also he says to cast out the uh, devils. Notice with me now. And the Bible says, uh, in uh, Matthew chapter 9, uh, then came, uh, in verse 14, uh, are you there? Amen. Then came to him uh, the disciples of John, uh, saying, Why do we and uh, the Pharisees fast off, but thy disciples fast not? What was the question? Why? Now, there was a time uh, when uh, the disciples of John uh, were fasting. But Christ's disciples were not fasting. But now we just read, uh, Christ is sending the disciples out, uh, but he said, don't take no food with you. And then he commanded them to cast out devils. We'll come back to Matthew 9. Let's see what Spirit of Prophecy tells us here on the screen. She says here on the screen, A father had uh, brought uh, to them, that's the disciples there, his what? His son, to be delivered uh, from a dharma spirit uh, that tormented uh, him. Authority over unclean spirits to cast them out had been uh, conferred on uh, the disciples. When Jesus went out, uh, the twelve uh, to preach uh, through Galilee, remember Jesus just sent them out? Then it says, as they went forth, strong in faith, they were what? Strong in faith. The evil spirits had what? Obeyed their word. Now in the, same, in the name of Christ, they commended the water. The torturing spirit uh, to leave uh, his uh, victim. But the demon only mocked them uh, by a fresh display of his uh, power. What demon is he referring to? This is the account when the disciples, as they went out, after Jesus sent them out, to cast out demons. But they find themselves with this young man who, had, who was possessed by demons, but they could not cast the demons out. But notice now what she goes on to say. Then she says, but the demon only mocked them by a fresh display of, the, of the, his power. The nine disciples were yet pondering upon the bitter fact of their own failure. And when Jesus was once more alone with them, they questioned, why could not we cast him out? Notice now, Jesus answered them, this kind goeth what? Not out, but by what? Prayer and what? And fasting. This kind does not go out only by uh, prayer and fasting. So there are certain things, and uh, as uh, God sends us out to do, there are certain diseases that will never come out unless we are willing to crucify self in behalf of others. 
You see what Jesus was asking them to do here? Jesus was saying, was saying to the disciples, there was one thing that you did not do in this case here. You did not crucify self. You did not deny yourself of food. And uh, because this kind will only come out uh, by fasting and praying. And fasting for somebody else is uh, crucify the flesh. Willing uh, to crucify myself on behalf of someone else. So fasting uh, is not just uh, for our own benefits, but it's for the benefit of others. Amen? Notice now, back to the screen. And then uh, Jesus says, uh, in order to... Uh, succeed in such a conflict, they must come to the work in a, a different spirit. Their faith must be strengthened by fervent prayer and what else? And fasting. Now, let's go back now to Matthew 9. Looking at the question again, uh, the disciples of John came and asked uh, Jesus. Matthew 9 uh, verse 14 again. Are you there? It says, Then came unto uh, him the disciples of John, saying, why do we and the Pharisees fast oft, that means often, but thy disciples fast not? So what's the answer? Notice now. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days, notice with me now, the what? The days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them, and then shall they do what? Fast. So Jesus was looking at uh, the future there. Jesus was looking at uh, 40 days or 50 days before Pentecost. What's 50 days before Pentecost? The cross. He was looking at Passover. Very good. He was looking at Passover. He was looking at the cross. So Jesus says there's a time coming when the bridegroom, when the master will not be around. Then what would happen? then the disciples will need to fast. Yes. So as long as Christ was in their midst, so there was no need for that. Yeah, are you catching that? Yes. Christ was in their midst, many, uh, uh, meeting their needs, their necessities. There was no need for that. But now Christ there, go back again uh, to uh, verse uh, 15. Uh, the, lot of the middle part, it says, but the days will come. Oh, is there a day coming up on us? Amen. Is there a day coming up on us uh, when uh, the only way we are going to make it in these last days will be through fervent uh, prayer and uh, fasting with the denial of self in order to conquer the world, in order to conquer our enemies. The same way Jesus met the foe in the wilderness uh, and conquered him. How? fasting the denying of self this is uh, what Jesus uh, was referring to here there's a time coming uh, again uh, let's read that but the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them and then shall the water shall they fast notice now brothers and sisters there is a time that is right upon us uh, where we need this uh, to be like Jesus in the wilderness and fasting and praying. Remember the, one of the reasons why Jesus was fasting in the wilderness? Because uh, he was about uh, to begin his ministry. He was about uh, to face the world. He was about uh, to face the challenges, the mockery. He was about uh, to face all of the temptations. He was about to face uh, Peter, the um, the unconverted Peter, and he was about to face uh, Judas, who denied him, who was a friend. He was about uh, to face uh, loved ones who would deny his, uh, him being the Messiah. He was about to face all of these things. He needed to be strengthened. He needed to have an experience with God. Therefore, he needed to have a one-on-one -on -one with God. So likewise, when the God brought the children of Israel to the wilderness, so that uh, they could have a personal relationship with Him. Fasting uh, was one of the ways that God uh, did this. And uh, Jesus says there's a time coming and it is right upon us, brothers and sisters, when we're going to need to be fasting and praying according to what, what is developing uh, in our world today. 
we're going to need this. Notice with me what it says here on the screen. From the Daily Wire, August 27, 2017. It says, Berkeley, anti-fascist protests turn what? Violent as Antifa clashes uh, with what? With uh, police. Black cloud protesters swarm apart as police uh, were told to do what? To stand up. Police were told to do what? To stand down. What is happening right now? What is happening? So we are at, at this point here where we have... Uh, we must have uh, an order out of chaos. So those in authority were told to what? To stand down because that's the name of the game. Everything is happening very rapidly. Whereas, uh, by the way, all of these uh, protests that's going on and uh, it's about uh, racism. It's, it's, uh, it's a way of uh, trying to shut down uh, the three angels' messages. It's a smoke screen because uh, what... What kind of laws they're going to be implementing? And they're already doing this. Hate speech laws. And let's come together. Let's put an end to this uh, hate uh, that's going on throughout the country. That's uh, dividing us. What, what did I say? Dividing us. Notice now another article here. It says here, from uh, NBC Los Angeles 4, it says, 10-day anti-white supremacy march plan from uh, Virginia to where? To D.C., August 26, 2017. Notice what it says there. Remember what I said? Uh, let's come together. A multiracial coalition of what? Faith. They created uh, these uh, problems uh, so that uh, the nation can come together and uh, to fight uh, hate. You understand this? To fight uh, those who would speak uh, against the papacy. Notice now. A multi-racial coalition of faith, student, and a community activists will march more than 100 miles from Charlottesville, Virginia, to D.C. in response to what they call President Donald Trump's failure to confront the white supremacy on display at a violent rally in the Virginia city. So they, the people of faith, the nation are coming together, so the people now are demanding a solution. What were... What did the Spirit of Prophecy say about uh, the Sunday law? It would be through popular demand. The coming together. Notice now, back to the screen. It says, organizers include the Women's March and the Movement for Black Lives. Notice now, the Women's March and the Movement for Black Lives. We have all of these uh, movement going on. Notice now, back to the screen. It's uh, a clear, it's clear rather, it's clear that we can no longer wait for Donald Trump or any elected official to face reality and lead. We are coming, uh, what, what's the word? Together. To reckon with America's long history of a white supremacy so that we can begin to, what are the words? To heal the wounds of what? Of our nation. Did the Revelation 13 speak of this? This healing of the wound of the nation is uh, taking the nation uh, back to God because of uh, immorality, because of uh, violence, because of these things. But we remember, they have created this atmosphere to bring uh, uh, order out of uh, chaos. Speaking of order out of chaos, notice now what it says there. It says here, from a WXYZ Detroit ABC, Trump to undo... Obama order allow what? Local police to have additional military-like uh, items. So notice now. So what will we be seeing uh, in the streets uh, as a result of uh, these uh, movements, these uh, protests, uh, with these uh, riotings? What will? Military personnel on the streets. We've already been seeing this, but now Trump wants to reinforce this. Notice now, another one here. It says, from a MSN, August 28th, 2017, Trump prepares to lift limits on military gear for police. So th there must be order. People are out on the street protesting, rioting, so we must have order. You understand what's taking place? 
and these are happening in the cities. Notice now, Trump was preparing to sign an executive order undoing an Obama administration directive that restricted police agencies access to grenade launchers. The what? Grenade. We're talking about police here. Why do police need a grenade launchers? Are we in Iraq? Is this a, a war against whom? Notice now, back to the screen. Again, it says, access to grenade launchers, bulletproof vests, riot shields, firearms, ammunition, and other su surplus military equipment. National police organizations have long been pushing Trump to hold to his promise to once again make the equipment available to local and state police uh, departments. So let's uh, militarize yes. our police departments, right? Yeah, let's militarize, and uh, yes, that would be martial laws. And uh, again, uh, another one here. It says from the Washington Post, August 27, 2017, Trump to restore program sending surplus military weapons equipment to police. And uh, let's skip on down there to uh, red words. It says the police who? Union. union. Keep that in mind. The who? Who's behind this? The, the police union. What have we been told about the union? The union, the trade union will be one of the agencies that will cause a, a time of trouble like we've never seen before. Now, do you see who's pushing the button here? But behind the union is the papacy. Amen. Again, uh, red words. The police union has lobbied for the restoration of the program. And Trump said he would do so during uh, his campaign. Now he's uh, fulfilling this promise. So we are seeing uprising, riotings, and all of these things taking place. But what else uh, that tells us that we need to be prepared, that we need to be spending much time in prayer and fasting? What, what, is, what else is happening at the same time? Well, not just ecumenism. Let's, let's think environment now. What just happened here? Notice on the screen here. D do you see this on the screen? This is uh, the aftermath of uh, Hurricane Harvey. Remember, there's a call right now. We'll talk about this more, Lord willing, on Sabbath. But there's a call right now that uh, we need to take action because of uh, these type of uh, uh, natural events that are taking place. Because of uh, climate change. Again, uh, back to the screen. Uh, we're looking at a before and after picture there of uh, an area here in uh, Texas. This is uh, Highway 610 East Loop that we are looking at here, a before and after. And uh, another picture here. This is from uh, Interstate 45 North at White Oak Drive uh, overpass. Again, uh, a before and after picture. Now, by the way, it's still underwater. And it's getting worse and worse and worse. Another picture here. This is from uh, Memorial Parkway. You see the p before yeah. and after picture there? This is uh, a total chaos down there. Mm -hmm. Notice now, another picture here from Buffalo Bay Bayou in uh, Houston. We're looking at a before, the top one is a before picture, and the bottom one is an after picture. Again, uh, another one here from a White Oak uh, Bayou at the Durham uh, Street Bridge. Notice with me now. You can't really tell if this is a natural weaver or not. Mm -hmm. This is a before and after. Notice with me what it says here in a Washington Post. It says, uh, Texas officials say, at least nine dead uh, as a uh, Harvey flooding uh, continues. It says, uh, well, yeah, but now it's 19, right? It says August 28, 2017. Again, uh, look at uh, some pictures there of the streets uh, of a te uh, some areas in Texas here. Now, this is, uh, this is not uh, a small. This is a Category 4 hurricane that hit this, that area. And uh, we haven't had uh, a Category 4 hitting this, uh, this, uh, this country in a long time, especially down there in the Gulf of Mexico, right. where Texas is, is right now. 
This was a monster storm. And uh, what happened as uh, it hit Texas, made landfall in Texas, more like uh, around the uh, Christie Crosby area, uh, Cor Corpus Christi area, and, uh, the, and then it stalled. Yeah. It just uh, stays there and dumping rain after rain after rain, uh, day after day after day, and then uh, now we get to this point. The, we're talking about billions of, and billions of dollars of damage here. Now think about this. This is exactly what the Pope has been talking about. This is what the Spirit of Prophecy had told us from the book uh, um, Great Controversy and uh, other passages there from uh, the Spirit of Prophecy. That uh, these calamities will lead to a Sunday law. And uh, she said they will get worse and worse and worse. But partly it's because men is behind them. The same way that they are behind uh, these riotings. Amen. They are behind these riotings so that uh, they can bring about order out of uh, chaos. They are also behind uh, these natural disasters. They're manipulating the weather so that they can enforce laws. Notice another one here. It says, uh, from uh, Half Post, uh, August 27, 2017, uh, it says there, nursing home uh, residents uh, seen uh, sitting uh, in waste High water before rescue. Now look at that picture there. You see the picture there of uh, these uh, elderly residents there? They are sitting in water. You see this? It says, more than uh, a dozen senior cit citizens are reportedly back on dry land after a plea for help showed them uh, sitting in waist deep wa flood waters in the aftermath uh, of uh, Hurricane uh, Harvey. Now, Again, as we are looking at these calamities, we are looking at a social unrest and we are looking at uh, calamities, natural disasters. What would be the call? To take uh, the nation, not just the nation now, but the world uh, back to God because this is not just happening uh, in one part of the world. No. This is happening uh, worldwide. Let's look to God now. But uh, notice with me now. The next article. It says here from CNN. Fire destroyed their home during Harvey. But a Virgin Mary statute what? Survive. Survive. So let's look to whom now? Let's look to Mary. And looking to Mary is, uh, is legislating Sunday law. Did you know this? Looking to Mary is a call to legislate Sunday. It says, uh, a family in uh, Robstown, just west of uh, Corpus Christi, lost their homes to a fire just as uh, Harvey was uh, hitting the area. The family had evacuated uh, their three houses on property they, they own. All three houses destroyed by fire. But they also found uh, something, notice with me now, in the ashes that they say gave them uh, what? Hope. An intact statue of who? Of the Virgin Mary. Some may blame God and some may blame the hurricane. But the only thing standing were, were, were what? A holy thing. And what was that? That statue of Mary. And then it says, I dug in there for things and all I found is a Virgin Mary. So who's giving them hope now? The Mary. That would be the devil. That's right. That will be the devil to look to now. That's the, that's the call there. The, who's be, then think about this. Who's behind these uh, natural disasters there? Who's behind them? Amen. Notice now. Again, this is not something that's just happening in the uh, United States of America. But there is an, an increase. And in very in, the world is uh, being taken hijacked right now. A Sunday law is around the corner. Amen. I know you've been hearing this over and over again. But uh, the Bible never gets old. We need to hear it over and over again. Especially those of us uh, who are still in the cities to take heed. Amen. Jesus says, flee to the mountains. Notice now. Another one here from the, the Rodders. It says, worse monsoon floods in years 
killed more than 1,200 across South Asia. Yeah. Notice now, worst one. Texas, the, the governor down there said that was their worst storm that they have. Now, in another part of the world, they said it was the worst monsoon. It's kind of similar to a hurricane. Notice now, the death toll from floods in India, Bangladesh, and Nepal has climbed above 1,200 as rescue workers scramble to provide aid to millions. How many? Millions. millions. We're not talking about thousands here. We're talking about millions of people that have been affected by this. And it's three countries at once. Mm -hmm. Millions of people stranded by the worst such disaster in years. Another one dealing with uh, the same thing here. It says here, 1,200 die as devastating what? Climate, Climate change linked floods submerge parts of South Asia. It says, August 29, 2017, this year's monsoon season has brought torrential downpours that have, uh, notice now, submerged wide swaths of South Asia, destroying tens of thousands of homes, schools, and hospitals, and affected up to how many people? 40 million people. As a matter of fact, uh, there was uh, another one that I didn't put here, where it, it, it says in one city that one third of the city was underwater. That was in, that, yes. Notice now, another one here. From the Telegraph, it says, uh, Typhoon Halo, Hato leaves how many? 16 dead as 27,000 evacuated in China. That was August 24th, 2017. We're talking about uh, what has been happening in the past few days, brothers and sisters. Worldwide, in the past few days, it says the strongest, uh, notice again, the strongest, strongest typhoon, strongest hurricane, strongest uh, typhoon again in China. It says the strongest storm, to hit the parts of uh, southern China in half century, continue to wreak havoc on a Thursday, leaving 16 people dead, dozen in injured, and forcing tens of thousands to be evacuated uh, from their homes. So this is what's happening in our world. The tension, the commotion that we were told uh, that would happen before we see a Sunday law. There will be an increase. Uh, Two years ago, the Pope put out uh, his uh, encyclical on climate change. He said there is an emergency to do something about it before it's too late. Uh -huh. What do you think uh, we're going to be hearing about uh, these storms uh, as a result of these storms uh, that are waging and destroying the world right now? What do you think we're going to hear? Notice now. Well, let's ask spirit of prophecy. This says here, from great controversy... Page 589, 590, it says here, In accidents and uh, what else? Calamities by sea and by land, in great conflagrations, in fierce tornadoes and uh, terrific hailstorms, in tempests, floods, cyclones, tidal waves, and uh, earthquakes, in every place and in thousand forms, Satan is exercising uh, his power. So who's behind these uh, calamities? Who's behind what's taking place right now? Satan. Satan. Why Satan is behind all of these calamities? Let's keep reading. Back to the screen. It says, these visitations will uh, are to become more and more frequent and disastrous. And then uh, the great deceiver will persuade men that those who serve God are causing uh, these uh, evils. It will be declared that men are offending God by the what? By the violation of the Sunday Sabbath. So what will happen? What is coming? Sunday A Sunday law is coming. Notice with me now. That this sin, what is this sin? Worshipping on the Sabbath is bringing calamities that will not cease until they do what? Until they keep Sunday. So this is where we're heading. What do we need to do, brothers and sisters? Jesus was in the garden. He was about to face a crisis. The Bible says he spent much time in prayer. 
and fasting as well because he did not eat until uh, he was, well, not even until. He did not eat at all. He went a sleepless night. He went to the cross the following day without eating anything. Amen. The same way he conquered the enemy in the wilderness with no food, the same way he gained victory over the second item on that list. Sin. The first one was what? Self. Self. In the wilderness. The second one was? Sin. Sin. Amen. But notice with me now, the beauty of that. There was a third item there on that list. What is it? Satan. The sin and Satan. So he conquered sin on the cross without food. He conquered self in the wilderness without food. He conquered the enemy at his resurrection without food. That was Satan. The enemy tried to keep him in that tomb, brothers and sisters. He conquered that enemy with an empty stomach. Hallelujah. That's how we're going to make it to the kingdom. When Jesus comes again, as we read in 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, that we will meet the Lord in the air. Where will we be? Where will we be at that time? We will be in the wilderness. That's where we will be. We will be in the wilderness. That's where we will meet the Lord. And uh, in that wilderness, uh, that means uh, we will meet the Lord uh, after spending, I don't know, several days without food. That's how we will meet the Lord. And then uh, the Lord uh, will uh, reward us as we just read a moment ago. You remember? We just read that uh, a moment ago in the book of Matthew. That the Lord will reward us when he says, when ye fast, do not fast like the hypocrites do. But how do you do it? Do it in secret. Well, the wilderness is a secret. Amen? The wilderness is a secret. You're not in the world. And the Bible goes on to say that God will reward you if you allow him to help you, to help me, to help us, to gain victory over sin, over, uh, over self first, over sin, and over the enemy. That's how we will conquer the enemy. That's how we will conquer sin. That's how we will conquer self. Control over our appetite. Back to the screen again. Notice now. She says again, uh, blue words. She says, it will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath, that this sin has brought calamities which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be what? Strictly enforced. So what's coming? Uh, there is a time of trouble coming upon us. And uh, this, uh, cala these uh, calamities, this civil unrest, this social unrest that they have uh, put together to bring uh, all the religions Everybody together is uh, gaining ground. Yes. Even with this so-called climate change there. Notice the next article here. It says here, from a USA Today, churches doing what? Mobilize to do what? To protect uh, the what? The environment. They're doing what? They are mobilizing to protect the environment. What's the solution to protect the environment? According to Laudato Si, encyclical on climate change by Pope Francis. Keeping Sunday, notice now, it says, back to the screen, whether it's uh, installing solar panels at their churches, taking part in an Earth Day walk, or ensuring disposal dining where many religious people, from uh, Catholics to Presbyterians to, to who, who else? Buddhists. Buddhists are getting involved. The alliance, a, co a coalition of theologians, who else? Pastors, who else? Ministry leaders, who else? Scientists, economists, policy experts, and laymen. You know what comes to mind? No one uh, left behind. No one is going to be left behind. We want everybody on board. As a matter of fact, they, their intention is not to leave any, anyone behind, for sure. Those who try to not get involved are going to be killed. They're not going to leave anyone behind. It's either you follow 
or you'll be killed. They're not going to leave any man uh, behind uh, that would remain behind alive. So that you follow or be killed. Notice now. Again it says, describes itself as evangelical. So these coalition there, this alliance there of uh, theologians, pastors, ministry leaders, scientists, economists, policy experts, and laymen describes itself as uh, an evangelical voice promoting uh, what? Environmental stewardship and economic development built on uh, what? Biblical principles? What biblical principles that they are referring to here? Their own uh, biblical principles, which uh, has behind it uh, Sunday law. This is where we are, brothers and sisters. There is a time coming. Back to Matthew chapter 9. Matthew chapter 9 again. Jesus said uh, in uh, Matthew chapter 9. Jesus says in verse 15. Are you there? Matthew chapter 9 verse 15. And Jesus said unto them, Can the children of the bride chamber mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? But the days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them and then shall they do what? Shall they fast? But notice now. Jesus, what was the question that was asked? Why come you fasting? Back to verse 14. Then came to him the disciples of John, saying, Why do we and the Pharisees, what's the word? Fast, fast often. But your disciples are not fasting. Why? But how did Jesus answer the question? He said the word, he used the word mourn. Remember? He used the word mourn. There was a, a morning time coming where the Bible described it as a Rachel would be weeping for her children. This is describing a time of trouble like we've never seen before. And the final movement will be rapid ones. And the final act that will bring about this time of trouble is Sunday legislation. And uh, this is what climate change is about. This is what uh, this uh, social unrest, this civil unrest we are seeing are all about. To bring everybody together, to bring order out of chaos. This is where we are. Again, Jesus says that, uh, but the days will come. What is it? The days will come when the bridegroom shall be taken from them and then shall they fast. So the days will come. When we're going to need to fast. Our time has come. As a matter of fact, uh, if you go to the book of uh, Esther. Which book? If we go into the book uh, of uh, Esther. We see a similar story there. From the, from the book of uh, Esther. About a time of trouble that came upon uh, God's people. And uh, notice with me in uh, the book uh, of Esther. How the Bible says uh, that uh, they, uh, they handle this. Now you, you know the uh, story of uh, um, Esther, Queen, Queen Esther, and uh, Mordecai, and uh, Haman. Amen? Yes. We are going to the book of Esther chapter 3. Esther chapter 3. Notice with me now in the book of Esther chapter 3. And uh, there was a decree that was given uh, to annihilate all the Jews. Now we were told in the spirit of prophecy that uh, what happened uh, there when the, that decree was passed, as Sister White just, just said, uh, that because of the calamities, uh, there will be a call for s to keep Sunday holy and will eventually, God's people will be the target in this last day because they're going to be seen as lawbreakers yes. for not keeping Sunday and they're going to blame them for the calamities that will befall upon the land. Notice now, we are in Esther chapter, chapter 3. And the Bible says uh, that there was a decree that was passed uh, to annihilate uh, all, the, all the Jews. And then it says here in uh, verse 7, In the first month, that is uh, the month of Nisan, in the twelfth year of uh, King Ahasuerus, they cast per, that is the lot before Haman, from day to day and from month to month to the twelfth month, that is the month of Adar. And Haman said unto the king Ahasuerus, There is a what? A certain people scattered abroad, 
and on the what? And dispersed among the people in all the provinces of that kingdom. And their laws, their what? What is it? Their laws are diverse from all people. Neither keep they the king's laws. Now, the king's laws there will be this universal decree. The Sunday law, universal decrees. That will be passed. That will be contrary to the law of God. What was the laws there that Haman was referring to? That these people keep above your law, king. The commandments of God. And uh, what is uh, the law of uh, worship? What does the law of worshiping God say to, uh, to you and I? Six days you shall labor, but the, the seventh day, and which is the seventh day, that's Saturday as we know it. Which law that will contradict that law? Sunday, which is the first day of the week. So it's exactly what's about to take place. And this is going to happen very rapidly, sooner than most of us think. Notice now, it says here, in verse 8 again, he, he's talking to the king, uh, and their laws are diverse from all the people. Neither keep they the king's laws. Therefore, it is not for the king's prophet to suffer them. So notice now, if you don't do something about them, uh, they will cause a revolt. They will cause others to revolt against you. So let's do something about it right away. And says, if it please the king, let it be written that they may be, what's the word? Destroyed. Destroyed. And I will pay 10,000 talents of silver to the hands of those that have the charge over the business to bring it into the king's uh, treasury. So that's the plot there against uh, the people of God. And uh, the king uh, did uh, sign this into law. But notice now, when uh, Mordecai found out uh, as uh, the command uh, was given, the decree was given uh, to annihilate God's people. And the Bible says uh, in uh, chapter 4, are you there? Yes. When Mordecai, verse 1, perceived all that was done, Mordecai did what? Rent uh, his Clothes uh, and what else? And put on uh, sackcloth with what? With ashes uh, and uh, what else? And cried with a loud and uh, bitter cry. So what, what does it mean uh, to put on uh, sackcloth and ashes there? What does it mean? Uh? Mourning, but it follows, it, it was more than this. Notice, let's keep reading. And uh, came even before the king's gate, for none might enter into the king's gate clothed with sackcloth. And in every province, whithersoever the king's commander and his decree came, there was what? Great mourning among the Jews. And what else? Ah. So the mourning and sackcloth and ashes represent a time of trouble that requires fasting, brothers and sisters. And weeping and welling and many lay in sackcloth uh, and ashes. That's the time that's coming. So what must God people do at that time, at this time? Fasting. Fasting and praying. Jesus did likewise. Before he began his ministry. Before he came uh, to this world. To, uh, not to this world, but before he started uh, preaching and healing uh, before he started facing all of the mockery, all the rejections, he went to fast to gain the victory over self. And even uh, before he could uh, accept the cup, he, was, uh, he spent a night praying. Then a day after that fasting to gain victory over sin at this time, then a victory over Satan. There's a decree that's about to pass, as we just read from my Sister White. Sister White says, let's look at that quote again, back to the screen. Sister White says, in uh, blue words, It will be declared that men are offending God by the violation of the Sunday Sabbath, that this sin has brought calamities which will not cease until Sunday observance shall be strictly enforced. And that de decree that was given there by the king, who was influenced by Mordecai, 
that law had to be strictly enforced. Mm -hmm. Notice with me back to the screen what it says there. From uh, Prophets and Kings, page 601. It says, There was a great mourning uh, among the Jews. Speaking of the time of Mordecai there, after the decree was given. And uh, what else? Fasting. The decree of the Mids and Persians could not be revoked. That's the reason why there was mourning and fasting and praying. Because that decree could not be revoked. The decree of the Sunday law that's coming here okay, will not be revoked. It, that would be like Titus coming and surrounding Jerusalem and will eventually destroy Jerusalem. You understand this? This is what we are looking at. Titus that's about to come and that decree will bring up destruction upon the world. Notice now, back to the screen. It says, again, the decree of the Mids and Persians could not be revoked. All the Israelites were what? Doom to destruction, but the plots, notice now, of the enemy were defeated by a power that reigns among the children of men. The what? The, power. Ah, the plot of the enemy was what? Defeated. Was defeated. This is also describing uh, the 144,000 in this in the last days, as the decree was given uh, to uh, annihilate them. But God will come to their rescue. Amen? God will come to their rescue. Because you know why? They have gained victory over self, over sin, and, and Satan. Amen? We need to gain a victory over self, over sin, and over Satan. Notice with me now. Go to the book of John. Which book? The book of John chapter 16. John chapter 16. And uh, the word of God says here in John chapter 16. Are you heading there? Verse 19, it says, Now Jesus knew that they were desirous, they were desirous to ask him and said unto him, Do ye inquire among yourselves of that I said, A little while and ye shall not see me, and again a little while and ye shall see me? Verily, verily, notice now, I say unto you that ye shall weep. You shall what? Weep and lament. But the world shall do what? The world shall rejoice, and ye shall be sorrowful. But your what? But your sorrow shall be turned what? Into joy. Amen? Hallelujah. Your sorrow shall be turned into joy. So what is God telling us here? God is telling us there's a time of trouble coming. There's a time of weeping and mourning and fasting coming. But he's saying, hang on. Like he was doing to the children of Israel. Moses says uh, in uh, Deuteronomy chapter 8 again uh, that God caused you to be hungry in the wilderness so that he might know that man shall not live by bread alone but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. They needed this experience, they needed this fasting experience not only to overcome self, to overcome sin, but to face uh, their enemy. To be victorious and the generation that uh, made it to the wilderness was the de generation that did not murmur, that did not complain. It was the generation that fully consecrated their, themselves to the will of God. That was the generation that made it. The generation that complained about food in the wilderness did not make it because they would not have been able to stand before their enemy. They would not have gained uh, victory over sin and uh, they were not even gaining victory over self so it was already a lost battle so we must gain a victory over self now god is asking us in these last days to fully consecrate ourselves and as we fast fasting uh, as we just saw is a uh, humility is uh, inviting the lord to search our heart is uh, emptying ourselves, allowing the body to cleanse itself uh, from uh, whatever tax uh, that's uh, in there. That's giving the body time to remove it, to flush these things out of the system. And that is sin. As a matter of fact, let's close with that passage there. Psalm chapter 51. Which book? Psalm chapter 51. 
Notice with me what uh, the Word of God says here. This is, of course, uh, the prayer of uh, David in Psalm chapter 51. Notice now. It's an invitation. Remember? Come now. Let us what? Reason together. Though your sins may be as scarlet, I will make them white as snow. Fasting, mourning is an invitation for God uh, to search us, to empty our lives of the filthiness. Amen? As Moses was humbling himself before the Lord, have mercy upon me. That should be our attitude when we're fasting before God. Have mercy upon me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according unto the multitude of thy tender mercies, blot what? Out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from mine iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. For what? I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me against thee. Thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight, that thou mightest be justified when thou speakest, and be clear when thou judgest. So that should be the attitude of fasting. Not like the hypocrite does it, but fasting should be a way of humbling, surrendering all to Jesus Christ, and allow Him to come into our lives and to cleanse us as David was begging uh, the Lord to do for him. Verse 7, it says, uh, Purge what? Me with his up, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Make me to hear the joy and gladness that the bones which thou hast broken may rejoice. Hide thy face from my sin, and blot out water. All my iniquities. Probation is about to close, brothers and sisters. We want to humble ourselves before God. Prostrate ourselves in the dust and fasting and mourning and weeping. Amen? This is the time that we're living the anti-typical day of atonement. That was supposed to be the attitude of the people on, right before the day of atonement comes. That was supposed to, that's what they were supposed to, to be doing, fasting and mourning. Now, it's one thing uh, to fast, to uh, ask God to keep us from the hour of temptation, to help us to make it to the crisis. But we need to fast as well so that uh, when probation closes, we will not be found on the balance. Amen? We will not be found on this balance that... We know there will be no defilement in us. And that's what fasting does. So it's the remove all the impurities from uh, the body. And God invites us to uh, verse 11. Cast me not, David says, away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the what? The joy of thy salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit, then, uh, notice now, will I teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall do what? Shall be converted uh, unto thee. Brothers and sisters, this is talking about uh, the consecration for us in these last days. In order to speak the message, to preach the message with boldness, uh, that Babylon is indeed fallen and fallen. People need to see Jesus in us. People need to see Christ in us. But it comes with uh, the crucifying of flesh. And fasting is one of the ways that we can do this. That's what Jesus did in the wilderness. That's what he did before he went out uh, and uh, to bring healing uh, and to make disciples. Like the Bible says, uh, that David, David says, uh, I, that uh, shall sinners uh, be do what? Verse 13. Then will I teach transgressors Thy ways and sinners shall be converted unto thee. That's what Jesus did. He consecrated himself. He, he crucified the flesh uh, so that others can come to know our loving Savior. Amen? So notice with me now on the screen. It says here, I was uh, shown that the advocates of truth, the what? Advocate. Question for you now. Who are the advocates of truth? 
God's remnant. What else? Well, we, we just read something here in verse 13. Remember what David says? He says, I will teach sinners. sinners. I will teach transgressors. So the advocates of truth are who? You and I. You and I who have consecrated our lives to him. Again, back to the screen. I was shown that the advocates of truth should not seek a discussion. And uh, whenever it is uh, necessary for the advancement of the cause of truth and the glory of God, that an opponent to be met, how uh, carefully and uh, with, uh, what, what, what are the words there? Humility should they go into the conflict. With heart searching, confession of what? Sin. Of sin. And earnest what? Prayer. And uh, what else? And often uh, fasting for a time. They should entreat uh, that God uh, would uh, especially help them uh, and give His saving, precious truth and glorious what? Victory. Victory. We are on a battle. Amen? We, we are in a, in a battle. And this battle will continue to be waging until uh, Jesus comes again. And uh, the, one of the best ways we can stand on this battlefield uh, is uh, by denying the body, by denying the flesh uh, something that it needs. And what's that? Food. That's how Jesus gained the victory. That's where we lost, or that's how, I should say, we lost the battle against the enemy in the first place. Over food, over appetite. Like the children of Israel, many of them fell in the wilderness because of the issue of appetite. And uh, Jesus gained the victory, in contrast, over the issue of appetite. Likewise, we must gain and conquer self, conquer sin, conquer our enemies uh, over our temperance. Let's pray. Loving Father, our God, help us, O Lord, to uh, put these things in practice. You have given us knowledge and understanding of uh, the end time. But it's one thing to hear about these things, but it's another thing to apply them in our lives and be ready. Father, help us to find this biggest enemy that we face each day. We go to bed with it. We wake up with it. That is self. If we can gain victory over self, as your son gained the victory, we can gain the victory over sin and our enemies. And help us, Father, to do so because we love you and because we want many more to come to know you to be in the kingdom. Prepare your people. Again, I want to pray for those who have been asking for prayer. They want to know, Father, where you would have them to go at this time as they're seeking for a country place. Those that are sick right here among us and others that have contacted us that are sick, I pray for their restoration for healing according to your perfect will for them. If there's any sin that have brought upon them this uh, problem, we pray that you would reveal it unto them and they would confess it so that you can bring healing upon their souls. Forgive us, Lord, of all our sins. In Jesus' name, amen.